finding balance more than anything else. Watch his exceptional story, Pursuits by Skoda, only on Bloomberg Quint. Hello and welcome to Bloomberg Quaint. My guest today is Lord Mervyn Davis, Chair of UK uh, India Business Forum. Uh, Lord Davis, thank you very much for joining thank us on Bloomberg much. Quaint. Uh, to begin with, uh, 2019 is going to be a uh, phenomenal year for both UK and India. From UK, uh, we hope that Brexit is finally there and we have more clarity. Uh, but how is it going to impact UK businesses and any investment into UK? Well, you know, one of the things about uh, my visit here as chair of the UK Indo Business Council is that I, I've been to India you know tens and tens of times in my time as a government minister and prior to that in uh, as chief executive and chairman of Standard Chartered Bank. Um, this is a country I love, I have a passion for. Uh, I, I do believe that India is moving and fast and changing uh, but, you know, inevitably, there's a lot of focus in the short term on the election here, yeah. and there's a lot of focus in the short term on Brexit in the UK. I think that uh, Brexit, undoubtedly, the, the, uh, the vote has caused uncertainty and caused people to, you know, question the UK. But what I would say is whatever happens with Brexit, the innovation, the creativity, the strength of the UK is undoubted. You know, the reality is the partnership between the UK and India is very fundamental to both countries, and uh, it continues to grow very strongly. So I don't think we, you know, we should concentrate on the short term. Uh, yes, short term, lots of issues. But in the you know medium and long term, huge opportunities. You know, um, many many of the Indian companies who are invested in UK uh, are on a standstill, getting trying to get clarity on how Brexit is going to impact, because many of them entered UK with an intention of getting into the European Union, because that was a gateway for them. Uh, how will that happen? Because uh, it's, till the time, do you see a timeline by when you will have more clarity on Brexit coming in so that uh, decisions can be taken? Well, I'm a, I, I was a re and, and remain a remainer. You know, I was very keen on remaining in, you know, very much as an integral part of the EU. But, uh, you know, the, we, we've obviously had a vote. We, you know, the Prime Minister will see what happens in the next uh, two weeks. Uh, you know, it may well be possible that there is another people's vote, as we call it. Uh, what what would, happens then? Because then you well, are prolonging the entire wait. phase, right? We, we, well, I think we'd have to wait and see. What, what I would say is that whatever happens, whether the Prime Minister gets her deal through or not, uh, I think that uh, the UK remains a hugely competitive market. Uh, it has got enormous strength in so many industries, great academic institutions, great innovation, creativity. Uh, London is a hub for, for services, financial services, you name it. And then other cities and other places in the UK are the same. So I think that, yes, in the short term, as said earlier, there's a period of uncertainty. But the prospects for growing trade between India and the UK are enormous, enormous. You know, and at the end of the day, British companies have invested huge amounts over the last five years and will continue to do so in the UK and India vice versa. You know, uh, I agree with you about the kind of investments which is there and how, uh, you know, Indian companies have been able to create businesses in UK. Uh, but in your opinion, what are the chances that we may have a second referendum? Well, I think, you know, look, I, I've been very public. I mean, I, I would have a second referendum. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm now a corporate person. I'm not, you know... You're an industry a, body head, chair, so... Yeah, but, but, I, but I'm not, a, you know, a member of parliament. So I think that it's for parliament to decide in the next week, 10 days, you know, what, what the course of action is. Uh, I think that the one thing about Brexit, it was a very complex issue, and what's happened in the last couple of years is more and more issues have come to the fore around the cost of it. So what I would say is I am still 
uh, of the view that Europe, and, and it is still the most important trading partner, trading block for the UK, will play a pivotal role. I still think that the UK will be a gateway to Europe, mm. and I still believe that FDI, once the short-term uncertainty is out the window, foreign direct investment into the UK will continue to flourish mm. because we've got the talent and we've got the creativity. Uh, the, the other thing I think we should talk about is that we're in the middle or the beginning of an industrial revolution. The impact of social media, the impact, the full impact of the internet, the full impact of, the, you know, beginning to impact the impact of artificial intelligence, data, and data management. So it's, you know, the barriers to entry to virtually every industry is coming down. Mm -hmm. And that's true of India, and it's true of every other country. So what we have to do is create more and more partnerships between universities, between businesses, between India and the UK, because I think that there's so much, so much that is complementary to both. So I'm very bullish about the India partnership with, with the UK, and I'm very bullish about the UK in, in the medium to long term. Short term, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I was looking at some of the figures uh, of trade. Uh, the trade balance uh, is more in favor of India in terms of surplus. Uh, what exactly uh, can be done to get a balanced trade of trade between both the countries? And my second question is with respect to uh, the foreign, uh, the f f free trade agreement. Now that's something has been talked about now that Brexit is, is coming in. Uh, how is it progressing? Well, I think you know. I, I think the stats, if they're right, si since 2000. You know, uh, UK has been the largest G20 investor uh, in India, 17 and a half billion pounds, and UK businesses employ what 800,000 people in the UK. So already there are you know massive links between the two, and whatever happens on a trade deal, I wouldn't predict what you know. There are many trade deals that the UK is going to have to do. Um, what I would say is, at the end of the day. The politicians and everybody will do trade deals, and that's very important. What I think is important, and this is what I've been doing in the last few days, is meeting uh, businesses and entrepreneurs. I had a very exciting visit this morning at the ISME uh, Institute, you know, the academy, um, just meeting with young entrepreneurs, with fashion designers, designers. I mean, it was inspiring to see the talent that was there. And also inspire and see how many uh, partnerships they had with with the UK. You also met uh, business uh, leaders over the last two or three days. You were in Delhi and now uh, today in Bombay. Uh, what was uh, the main concerns that they had uh, with respect to the entire business between UK and India? You know, I think um, if you're a young entrepreneur, you, 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 you're based in the UK, you see the huge market in India, you realize that the technolog technological advancement in India, the talent is extraordinary. So you want to tap into that, whether it's in software, whatever it might be, AI. Um, but I think a lot of people that I've been talking to have been talking about some of the bigger challenges if you're, for the bigger businesses, which are around infrastructure, around climate change, around pollution, around you know, some of the big things that are affecting big business. Um, I do think that we also have to take account of the fact that India has had great success in gradually opening up regulation and making, you know, reducing the paperwork, making it less bureaucratic, but it's a journey and it's not over. So, you know, the ease of doing business, uh, India has to continue to improve, continue to use technology to make it easier, uh, because I believe that foreign direct investment from Britain and other places will continue to flourish. And what about the free trade agreement? Um the government have started talking about it, but uh, what could be the contours, and it's how long before we can well, you see know, that uh, you know this agreement coming through, and what happens in the transition period? Well, I would never make predictions. I, I was trade minister for a couple of years. I'd never make predictions on how long trade agreements uh, will you know take. What I would say is put the politicians to one side. Business is getting on with life, right? 
the reality is that we see the scale of the market here. We see the scale of change in the consumer market. We see the scale of opportunity. And, you know, what I'm here to do is to promote that. I need to take the excitement that I have felt the innovation that I've seen over the last few days back to the UK mm. and almost bottle it and sell it. And in the, in the same way, I need, you know, uh, um, Indian businesses to see that when you look at life sciences, when you look at, you know, advanced manufacturing, when you look at financial services, services, you know, the, the, the creativity in the UK is extraordinary. Hmm. You know, UKIBC is also closely involved in the joint trade review between both the countries. Yeah. Uh, what kind of steps have you taken for in that uh, direction? Well, I think, you know, UKIBC has many members and, and you know, it's a very successful organization. And it does have input on, you know, trade policy and, you know, and also helps businesses. My focus as the chair is really more on, the, you know, when you look over the next five, ten years on the global economy and the economies of the UK and India, what you absolutely have to do is realize that uh, the young millennial generation has, is going to live a lot longer. It's going to, they, they have a very different attitude to ownership of assets, to flexibility in the workplace, you name it. And so, what I focus on is the sharing of best practice between the two countries, between businesses in both places. That's not a politician's job, but it is the job of people like UK, IBC, and of course we'll have an input into, you know, into trade policies or whatever, and tariffs are a huge issue. But what, what I would like to focus on is we need more and more understanding of, uh, of each other's opportunities because already the UK is fundamental to, you know, has this historic relationship that's special and is very fundamental to the growth of India. And, and I believe that Indian investment uh, is fundamental to the growth of the UK. You know, that's where the entire issue of uncertainty comes in, right? I mean, while it's easier for UK businesses to uh, invest in India because uh, you have some certainty of policy, you have, uh, you know, you don't have a Brexit uh, uh, hanging over your head. Uh, when it comes to Indian companies to increase investment in UK, uh, there is an uncertainty of Brexit. There's uncertainty in the US over Trump. True. There's uncertainty in China over some of the measures that have happened. There's uncertainty, you know, in Asia because of challenges around, you know, North Korea, etc. The, the world has many geopolitical challenges, right? Mm -hmm. Many, many issues around the world, and uh, you know that, that they shouldn't be underestimated. Uh, but and there's a big but. When you run businesses, you, you, you have to take account of those, but then you have to car carry on trading. My message on the UK is as follows, is that we have excellence everywhere. We have massive relationships with Indian corporates and families, and I believe they will continue to grow. So I don't think, in the short term, yes, people read a lot and they want to see what's happening on Brexit, obviously. There's no point underestimating the uncertainty. Is that going to impact FDI into UK from well, India? Well, at the very short term, I still believe that the UK remains one of the most attractive places to do business in the world. And so once there is a bit more clarity on, uh, on Brexit, I, I, I think it'll, it'll be business as usual. However, it's still going to be the gateway uh, to Europe it's just my personal view is that we would be better integrated as part of Europe rather than outside it. But that's a personal view. Okay. Uh, you know, I also wanted to check with you with respect to the survey which you did for the Indian businesses. Uh, now, as, per, as part of the survey, you spoke about barriers to entry and uh, legal and regulatory was the top, uh, you know, ranking that got uh, from UK businesses in India and followed by a taxation that came in. Uh, how do you see that scenario changing? Because you've been coming to India for the last couple of yeah. years. Uh, for, the, I've been coming to India for 
exactly. It's a decade. No. 30, you know, three decades. Three, three decades. You know, it's my age and stage. I've been coming here a long time. Yeah. <coughs> and, and that aspect continues to be there as a top entry barrier to India, right? Yeah, I mean, look, there is no doubt that the, the, uh, every politician and every department has to be obsessed about that, right? You have to be obsessed about the ease of doing business, about reducing the amount of paperwork. You know, it, it, it's just, and reducing the barriers. But that's true for every country. The scale of modernization that's going on here is, you know, is, is uh, almost beyond comprehension. Mm. But in order to stay very, very competitive, given what's happening in other parts of the world, it's incredibly important that that stays at the top of every ministerial agenda, right? And, and you know, it, it's, it, it is making it simpler for everybody, for foreign investors, for local investors, you know, because the more we see business startups, the more we see business thriving, the more we can take people out of unemployment and out of poverty. Which is absolutely... Taxation is one of those issues. Well, I think that... You, you know, have the issue of Kane PLC, where the Indian tax department attached the shares and sold it off in the market, yeah, I, while I, that arbitration is still going on. Yeah, I, I, hopefully that arbitration gets resolved uh, and everybody accepts the arbitration uh, clearly, retrospective things like that are, are, are not a good idea, and hopefully there will be many lessons learned from this episode. But I, I think that it is really important that, I, I think it's not just India, it's all countries, that we've got, we have a spirit of entrepreneurism the, uh, amongst this new generation, and they are willing to take more risks. You know, you see it every, all over the world. They're willing to, you know, to, to start businesses. We have to encourage them because that's how we're going to have economic success. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, finally, you know, I was uh, going through your document and uh, you mentioned there that there needs to be a greater bilateral economic alignment between both the countries. Uh, where are we lacking on that? Well, I think. Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, there's a famous economist, uh, Michael Porter, who I was quoting the other day, actually, and he, uh, in his book, Competitive Advantage of Nations, many years ago, wrote about what are the factors that you need for a successful economy, and of course, you've got to have a good educational system, you've got to have good infrastructure, good health system, and, and I believe that that's what India has to continue to be obsessed about in order to be competitive. But where, where are we lacking on alignment? Well, I think on alignment, I think India still has a long... Well, I think uh, India still has a long way to go on infrastructure, and I believe that has a long way to go on climate change. But uh, on the trade front, uh, do we need to take more steps on the trade front? For well, I think we just need... Uh, we need more partnerships between businesses. We need a greater education right across Britain on the opportunities in China. And we need to see more uh, universities coming, university students coming to the UK. We need to see more businesses uh, realizing in India that the UK is absolutely open for business and is a great place to partner with, you know, companies are great to partner with. Lord Lewis, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. सूरज तो हर रोज निकलता है लेकिन 